We'll now look at finding the volume of a three-dimensional object. And we're going to do this first by using something called the general slicing method. The first thing we need is that the object extends from x equal to a to x equal to b. So this will give us an idea of how big this object is in relation to the x direction. The other thing we'll need is that cross sections that are perpendicular to the x-axis need to have some kind of area a of x. Then we can find the volume of this object by integrating from a to b of this area function dx. This gives us the idea that if we just look at individual cross sections and take their area, we can integrate over all of those areas to get the volume. Here's our first example. We have a solid with the unit circle as the base and cross sections are semicircles. This object is just a half of a sphere with radius 1. So we can have some idea of testing to see if we got the correct answer here. We know our base is a circle with radius 1 since it's a unit circle. That means the bounds on the x-axis are negative 1 to 1, which will give me my limits of integration. The next thing we need is areas of these cross sections, these semicircles. Well, we need to know the radius to find the area of a semicircle. So if I draw my x and y axis, a cross section will be something like this. Because this is passing through the origin, we know that the x axis is going to be the center of this red line. Therefore, if I want to find the radius of the semicircle, I only have to find half of the red line. I know that the unit circle is given by x squared plus y squared equal to 1. And if I solve for y, I get that it is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. This tells me that the top half of this red line is given by the square root of 1 minus x squared. The area of a circle is then pi r squared, which would just be 1 minus x squared. Since this is a semicircle, we'll have to divide by 2. We can then pull out the pi over 2. We have the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 1 minus x squared dx. Integrating this gives us pi over 2 of x minus 1 third x cubed, going from negative 1 to 1. If I stick in these values, I would have 1 minus 1 third minus negative 1 plus 1 third. And this gives us 2 pi over 3. A full circle, or a full sphere rather, does have a volume of 4 pi over 3. If we divide that by 2, we do get 2 pi over 3. So we did get the correct answer here. Let's do a second example. This time we have a solid base bounded by y equal to x squared and y equal to 2 minus x squared. And the cross sections are squares. If I think about what this looks like, I have x squared that looks like this, and then 2 minus x squared will look like this one. To find my limits of integration, I need to know these two intersection points. So I can set these two functions equal to each other and solve. This gives me that 2 is equal to 2x squared, which gives me 1 is equal to x squared, so x should be plus or minus 1. So these are my limits of integration. I then need to consider the cross sections and find their area. This time, the cross sections are squares, so I need to find this entire distance and then square it. If I think about what it means for these functions, I can see that the top function here would give me everything from that function all the way down to the x-axis. And then if I subtract out the bottom, I subtract out the extra part. So my actual distance here would be the top function 
minus the bottom function. And then since this is a square and I want to find the area, I square this. We can simplify this and that gives us 4 minus 8x squared plus 4x to the fourth dx. Integrating this gives us 4x plus 8 over 3x cubed plus 4 over 5 x to the fifth going between negative 1 and 1. Evaluating would give me 4 plus 8 over 3 plus 4 over 5, rather minus 8 over 3. And then we would subtract out a negative 4 plus 8 over 3 minus 4 over 5, which gives us a volume of 64 over 15.